Hello and welcome to season three of the NGO Whisperer Show. My name is Caroline Opinde. I am the founder of the NGO Whisperer. We are a consulting business that provides technical support to nonprofits so they can successfully impact people's lives. Joining us from the United Kingdom is Wamboy Njao. She's the founder of Fanaka Foundation a nonprofit that is championing for the blind and people with vision impairment. Wamboy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you for welcoming me to your show. The organization is actually called Fanaka Foundation UK. That's where it's registered. Wonderful. So you are championing for people who are blind and people living with vision impairment. What inspired you to start this organization and to champion for this cause? I was actually encouraged and I was inspired by a very young lady called Jennifer, who I met in an event I had attended in UK, where I became, I was nominated for the role model um, by Women for Africa. And there was a lady there called Massimo Gure, who has her own magazine, she's a publisher called Disability is Not Inability. She had been um, nominated for uh, Role Model of the Year International by Women for Africa. And, and I realized I had no idea about disability in Kenya. We don't have a blind person in my family or any member of my family, but then I realized we don't have I can't think of any disabled person in my family that I know that I have met. So I started asking questions and Massey really put me in the right direction. She pointed out the disability in Kenya, the challenges that they get, and I followed that up. And obviously I met up with Jennifer. She said there's a girl called Jennifer. Uh, she's blind, not born blind. She was, um, she became blind at the age of 10. And the reason she became blind was because of diabetes. And I was surprised why would diabetes cause somebody to be blind? Obviously I didn't know much about diabetics, but then it was because she had lost both her parents and she had no medical cover. That really touched me and I made arrangements and it took me a long time to get to speak to Jennifer, but I got there when I decided I'm going to find out more a little bit about Jennifer when I was ready. And yes, I met Jennifer, I was inspired by this young lady and, and that was it. And she told me so much about the blind, the challenges I face, and, and here we are. Um, I started a foundation after meeting Jennifer after five, four years, and we've become very good friends. What a beautiful story, one boy. Oh, you know, globally, according to the World Health Organization, there are 2.2 billion people who are living with visual impairment and some of whom are blind. And according to this report, which is the World Report on Vision that was published in 2019, they say that uh, uh, at least one billion vision impairment could have been prevented or is yet to be addressed. Now, if you look at the population of the world, we are about 7.8 billion people and two 0.2 billion of us have vision impairment. One billion of those of us who have vision impairment or are blind could have been prevented. And like you said with your friend Jennifer, he was uh, suffering from diabetes and that's what caused her to be blind. Now, many people do not know this. Like you said, you know, Many people know that there are people who are blind, but don't mm. know what people who are blind face. Yeah. Uh, just to talk about days where we commemorate or we celebrate or we champion for vision impairment. Mm -hmm. uh, Wild Sight Day is celebrated every second Thursday of October. Mm. Now, not so many people know that. And then again, Wild Braille Day is celebrated on the 4th of January. As an organization that is championing for people who have vision impairment or people who are blind, share with us what programs or uh, activities do you implement? 
And you're right, the majority of the blind uh, in the world, it's, it could have been prevented. Cataracts um, are removable quite easily. Diabetes is something that needs to be treated. You can live your normal life with diabetes as long as you eat healthy and you follow the right things. So what does the uh, Fanaka Foundation do? Honestly, Fanaka Foundation, they are just playing their bit in ensuring that they can help at least one blind person, a blind boy or a blind girl that is suffering from diabetes. And, and we actually try and look for um, the blind that really truly need support if it's in education, if it's in, especially now with this COVID crisis with food. So Fanaka Foundation is only just playing a part with so many other organizations to at least help the, the, the number of, of, of young people that they can. And now we've also included the elderly to, to make sure that they are not forgotten. And, and also to ensure that they don't get touched by other people and get this COVID when, um, and you know, so we, we are trying to, to stop uh, them getting the virus by just staying at home. And Fanac Foundation has been either taking food to them, especially during this COVID crisis with the youth. Uh, some of them we've been sending money for education. I pair with um, an organization called uh, Kenya Society for the Blind. And I think when it comes to, uh, for anybody who is starting a charity organization, it is so important to partner and I know we'll come to that question, but can I just first read a poem about the blind? Because I think it, it also helps to understand, for those who will be watching this, to understand what it means to be blind. Please go ahead. Um, it, this is a small poem that I wrote when I was starting the foundation and it says, walk a mile in my shoes, hear what I hear, feel what I feel, but, I never wish you to see what I see because all I see every day and night is darkness because I'm blind. If you think about a blind person, um, you really don't know their, their journey unless it happens to you. Some of the people that I've met that have, that have become blind were people who were seeing like me and you they became blind. So this poem came from actually somebody that I met that could see, but now all he sees is darkness. This is where the, the poem came from. Um, why did I start the organization? Um, I would like to talk about, about that in still answering your question. What do we do? Our aims are very straight, simple. We promote the educational opportunities for girls and boys, particularly the disadvantaged and those who are totally blind and visually impaired. Mentorship for some of these blind uh, young people, and we raise funds for provision of equipment, not suitably for the visually impaired. So that's our aim. The mission is to increase awareness and services and equalization of opportunities for visually impaired, persons through partnership. So with that, I partner with Kenya Society for the Blind and we raise funds, as I said, through charity galas and, um, and also influencing change. So I've been trying to work closely with a company called Shipra to see where can Fanaka Foundation take part if it's to do with the schools, how do we make schools better for the blind? So I try and engage with con in, in conferences and talk about that. For me, I would like to see schools, mainstream schools with um, uh, giving. There is no reason why a blind person cannot go to a mainstream school. This is my argument in the foundation. All they need is paths, lead paths for them that they can walk where they need to sit in the classroom. And a laptop or a braille, but mainly a laptop that they can even listen and record what the teacher has been talking about and use it at their own time. And if it's homework, the teacher is talking, it's recorded. There's no reason for them. They cannot take part in a mainstream school. 
And these are the ones who are mainly in far off, you know, somewhere so far away from the school for the blind. Because schools for the blind, as you know, they're not that many, especially here in Kenya. So I try and the foundation tries and facilitate that. And, and also I need to work in the public eye um, on the well-being of the blind person. And I can tell you since I started the foundation, I've had so many people contacting me and saying, oh boy, did you know my brother was blind? But they never brought that awareness to their friends or to anybody about the, the challenges they face with their, with their member of the family. So that is, that is the services that we offer and awareness and obviously raising funds. Could you share with us uh, some lessons that you have learned as you have been preaching this gospel of inclusivity uh, across here in, uh, in the United Kingdom and also in Kenya where you work? When we talk about diversity and inclusion, sometimes it's, so, it's, just, it's just a buzzword so that an organization can say, yes, we have a section, we have tackled this, we've got a strategy on diversity and inclusion. But yes, you're tackling, but when you, when you talk about diversity and inclusion, which one are you dealing with most? Are you balancing diversity? Are you bal balancing 50-50 with inclusion? What I found in most organizations, they concentrate on the diversity part of this buzzword, because diversity means gender, male and female balance. They're talking about disability in general. They're talking about sexual orientations of people, you know, and they're talking about LGBT issues like that. But when it comes to inclusion, really, this is actually putting it into practice. There's very few that actually put it into practice. The challenges I have seen with the blind, it's almost when I approach a company to say, I would like this person to get a job here. Some can even be visually impaired. They're not completely blind. There's always that hesitation. Oh, we need to, we need to really talk about, we need to involve HR, we need to see how we can implement a better environment from them. But it never happens because I think organizations still feel there is a lot of work that they need to do there and they say they have to think about safety for the blind or disabled person. They have to think about, oh, we built this building. It's got all these stairs before you get to the main entrance. That means that um, there are no rams for somebody who is using a wheelchair. A blind person will probably go up those stairs, but how many stairs can they go up with a stick? and holding the rail. So when you approach a lot of the organizations now, the buildings that they have don't cater for those kind. It just means that they'll have to spend money more. And, and there, they, there you go, it goes very quiet. They'll still, they'll get back to you. So that's one of the challenges I, I, I get. The other challenges is educational opportunities. Most of the blind actually have issues with getting a school with, the, with all the equipment that they need to be able to get the full education like an abled person. Because for a blind person at an early age, when your child is born blind, they, they need a form of education system. For an abled child who's got eyes, you will go through their ABC. They can read the words. For a blind child, they need braille. They need to touch to be able to read the ABC in braille. That does not happen in, in most mainstream, not just even in Kenya, but even in, in the Western, Western world, the developed countries. So there is, that is another challenge. So a child is born and by the time they learn their alphabetical, that is taking, you know, up until they're, they're 10 years old to be able to learn their ABC. So what happens is they end up just relying on audio, which is also not... It, you cannot just completely rely on audio. I wouldn't want to re rely on the screen, on my TV screen all the time. I would like to be able to write and read and understand. So those are some of the challenges. And of course, there's funding. Um, families that are born blind, what happens if they're, they, they're not able, they cannot take their children to those 
expensive special, special schools, unless if the government decides to sponsor them, and the government can only sponsor so many of them, what happens to the rest of the children? So there's a challenge of funding. How do we fund those who cannot get the opportunity to get to the schools, especially for the blind? So the challenges are there. And, and it's the, the Fanaka Foundation UK, and there's, um, there's, uh, there's other organizations out there. They are playing their part to make sure that at least those who don't get the opportunity get the opportunity. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Those are real challenges that we face. Now, during COVID-19, you, you shared with us at the beginning and you said that you have worked to support people who are blind, uh, mostly in Kenya, where your programs are implemented, and also supported them to ensure that they keep safe. Because when someone is blind, they kind of depend on other people to help them cross roads and all that, mm. because we don't have the facilities to help mm. them be able to maneuver through and go through their day-to-day -day lives. Mm. Now, could you share with us what support has really gone into the community and maybe give us examples of how people can continue to support you, to support people who are blind and living with vision impairment. Thank you so much, Caroline. Um, one of the things that we, we did, one of the things I started with is to find out if a blind person lives near um, a big library, are there braille photocopiers in those libraries? If they need to photocopy something uh, in schools, even in mainstream schools, if they decide they want to take um, blind students, will there be braille photocopiers for them to be able to, to print their work? That is one thing I've been championing. Uh, last year, I had a charity gala, a very successful charity gala in St. Albans, where I live in UK. We raised the money in December. In January and February, we were starting out to look for the best place to get this braille photocopier uh, cheaply without too much um, costs for shipping it back to Kenya. And then COVID hit. So we are still to purchase that. Um, but the money is there ready to purchase a, a Braille photocopier. What else have I been doing? I've been raising money um, through donations. People have been donating laptops. I've been asking people to donate laptops, desktops, iPads. At the moment, I can tell you I've got so many that have been donated that I need to ship here. And these will be used for also for Kenya Society for the Blind, some of them, for training. So I then will be able, will be in a position to say, I've got these desktops, they've got the Joe software, which is what they need. I will see whether we can get braille keyboards to attach on these desktops, and then see whether there'll be more students who, especially those who have just lost their sight when they are being, going through rehabilitation, because one of the work that Kenya Society for the Blind does is rehabilitation. You've got military men, they've gone to, fight for our country. Uh, we've got like people like the fighting the enemies and especially for Kenya, we have the Al-Shabaab. What happens is that they, they get blind. They get, you know, step on a bomb and some of them, they others get blinded. Obviously there'll be death, death there. They have to go through this rehabilitation. I would imagine the desktops would be quite useful for them to learn rehabilitation, to learn the braille, to go through, you know, programs through this. So there is that as well. So I'll be donating. I've got 20 desktops. I've got four, five, almost six laptops that I'm still getting. I've got iPads that are being donated. This will be used for that. The other thing I've been doing is that in Kenya, I've got an organization called um, Epepea Online. They're very good for donations, uh, not donation. They actually buy food on behalf of Fanaka Foundation UK, and they take the food to the blind in Kenya. And this money is actually being used to mainly the elderly, because we've got elderly who are blind. So the money has been going to the elderly who are blind, but also to, to the young families. I've got a family, a mother is blind, dad is blind. They've got a baby who's been born blind. The money also has been feeding them. I've also got uh, Baraka Children's Home, who, and you know, I've been, I've been sending money to this family, but I've also got Baraka Children's Home. I've also donated money during COVID crisis to help with all these children who need food. So sometimes you go beyond just not helping the blind, but you go 
beyond helping even the orphan children living in these in these homes. So we've had quite a few programs, but at the moment with this crisis that we've got, the money is is just being used to just buy food and sorting out all these desktops and all this equipment that we are we are receiving, including white canes. I've got white canes which I need to bring here and it to Kenya for use. But obviously, um, at the moment I'm in Kenya, but I, I, I didn't have the opportunity to organize all this equipment to be shipped because I needed to come here before the lockdown to see my parents. <laughs> so, but that is one of the things that I'll be doing as soon as I go to Kenya. If the NGO Whisperer were to award you one million pounds, what sustainable development goal will you focus on? What project will you implement and who will benefit? My dream is to actually ensure that anyone born blind has got a place to go for, to help themselves. If it is the parents that need support, even just dealing with the fact that they have a blind child, where do they get help? What equipment do they need? Uh, when I started Fanaga Foundation, one of the things I wanted to do was to, to get um, a place where I've got a center for the blind, where a child who is blind and they, or a parent, a mother and a dad who wants to come to a center where they can hear the journeys of other moms and dads with blind children. How are they coping? What challenges are they facing? How can they get help? And also a section where they can also learn if it's learning, uh, training their children to use braille, training their, even the elderly. I mean, you've got an elderly person who's become blind. They have wheels to do, they have all these things to do. So they will have a center where they can also get that kind of help uh, without anyone taking advantage of their blindness. So almost like have um, also a kind, a kind of a place where they will get that kind of legal support. So that was the dream that I have, that I would like to get, have a center where I would have these three main programs, a program where moms and dads can come with their, with their blind child to, to see how they can get support and help. A place where there'll be a training for Braille, or if it is a Joe software, if it is any software that they need to be able to listen uh, and, and, you know, learn from that. And a place where even the elderly who need some help, somebody who needs help on signing forms, you try and help them out on the legal side. So this is where I was, I was, I was, if 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 I was to get any funds, that is what I would want to do. And and I'm here in Kenya at the moment trying to research how that is going to be possible for me. Thank you so much, Wamboy. As we come to the end of our show, what message do you have for any nonprofit, uh, government agencies, any philanthropist, or any person who works with the blind or vision impairment or who has a heart and wants to provide support to people who are living with vision impairment? What message do you have for them? Keep going. Don't. It's, it's, it's not easy because you're looking for funds from uh, good wish, good wishes, well wishes, but don't give up. If you can help one, that one person is going to help another and that person is going to help another. So never give up. Don't, don't expect to have so many people to help in one go. Sometimes it doesn't work. Do what you can, help who you can, the best you can. Don't let it stress you. And I mean, I'm a believer of God. I also say that when you give, you shall receive. And I can tell you right now, Caroline, I go to the account for Fanaka Foundation. People are donating. I haven't asked them, but they have been seeing the work that I'm doing. But you've got to have a passion. You have to understand the work that you want to do. So you've got to have a passion on that work and use opportunities where there's conferences, go and find out more. How can I get better in helping the, the needy that I need to help? So for me, I've got like this little girl, Faith, because her mom and dad is blind. I've seen, oh my God, she's got a beautiful voice. Who are the people who do I need to speak to to help her? I've had now a, a few, I've got an, an, um, 
video producer who has said, one boy, I'm going to sponsor this girl. This little girl, she's only six years old. She's now come up with her three songs. We're just waiting for the video. Now imagine this girl is going to help her mom, her dad, and herself. And she'll probably in this process, she's going to help so many others. Because now we're giving her a market to use the really gifted skill that she's got. Whatever you can do, do it with 100% heart. Just don't give up. What a great message. Whatever you do, do it with 100% of your heart and don't give up. Well, boy, it's been such an honor and a pleasure to have you here at the NGO Whisperer Show. We look forward to the amazing things that you are doing, especially with the galas that you will be organizing to raise funds. We look forward to uh, raising visibility on the amazing work that you'll be doing here on the NGO Whisperer Show and also in our magazine. Thank you so much. Thank you. For anybody who would like to know more about the organization, please go to www.fanakafoundationuk.org. You can contact me on Facebook, Wambu Injao. I've also got a Fanaka Foundation group there. Or I can leave my number as well on 07, which is plus 44, which is the UK number, 0758 and you can get in touch. Please help me to help the blind that we that really need our help. So thank you very much, Caroline. And um, I look forward to hearing um, on the work that you do. You're doing an amazing work. Please keep pushing, keep inspiring us. And thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. It's been such an honor and a pleasure to have Wamboy Jiao joining us today, founder of Fanaka Foundation. She is a champion for the blind and people living with disabilities. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media channels as well. And we look forward to collaborating with you to champion further for people living with vision impairment and the blind. Until next time, it's all about connecting people, raising funds, and impacting lives.